I'm really pleased to welcome all of you, and we've got a nice crowd today, to today's installment, which we call Cognitive Technologies, a Complete Game Changer for Knowledge Solutions. Now, here's the thing. We can make computers smart enough to win game shows, but can they perform a simple task such as answering a customer's question? This one simple task has plagued the customer service industry for more than a decade now, and according to Accenture, leaves up to 1.6 billion, oh, sorry, trillion with a T, up for grabs due to customer loyalty. With the exploding growth of mobile, social, traditional service channels, these companies need a fundamental step change in how they manage knowledge if they are serious about, quote, getting it right. If they don't, the demands of a more dynamic, empowered consumer are putting corporate revenue potential in, sorry, jeopardy. <laughs> I want you to meet today's speakers. Chris Hall, um, my old friend, is Chief Marketing Officer at Transversal. Chris brings more than 25 years of business experience as a senior marketing and product strategy professional in the enterprise software industry. Prior to joining Transversal, Chris was the Vice President in charge of Global Product Strategy Initiatives at Inquira and Kana Software. And then we have Neil Maysetter. Neil is the solutions engineer at Transversal. Um, he's actually the senior solutions engineer for Transversal. He has more than 28 years of experience of, of enterprise software industry in the I'm sorry in the enterprise software industry as a product and technical strategy professional. Prior to joining Transversal. Neil was also an industry analyst at Ovum and held various senior technology titles at Autonomy, Sun, Sybase, and Oracle. Now, if you want to learn more about the speakers, there's a bio tab on your console. You can hit that at any time, read more about the speakers. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm going to let Chris Hall take it from here and I'm going to get out of the way and stop taking up time. So please, help me welcome Chris Hall. Thank you, Andy. And uh, either good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're located in the world. Uh, I'm sitting here in a conference room in Cambridge, England, joined by my colleague, Neil Maceter. And uh, we've got some exciting technology we want to talk to you about. But um, as you heard from our bios together, I think our experience would put us well into the AARP retirement age of, uh, of, of technology guys. But uh, if, if that doesn't prove it, then I think the logos that I'm about to show you on the screen will. I uh, just want to give you a little history of where I came from from a, a, a technology standpoint in, in the world, uh, in, the, in the knowledge technology world. I started out my career in college on the phones at Tech Support, and, and I've used everything from DOS edit to text files. I think one of my first ones was Lotus Notes in regards to storing information. But, you know, KM Technologies have been around since, you know, middle to late 80s, depending upon which, which periodical you read. But just look at some of the groupware technologies um, in the 80s. In the late 80s, knowledge bases came out. I remember using a product called Inference, which I believe is now part of the eGain suite. Uh, I remember using Interwoven uh, from a website perspective and document management. Uh, Enterprise Search, Neil's uh, bread and butter back in the days of autonomy. And then company like online portals like Plumtree. So there's been a lot of technologies around that have tried to solve the technology problem of giving customers answers. When you look at it, from really the evolution of where this needs to go and, and the future of where knowledge needs to provide, KM Technologies falls really low on the value chain of really providing wisdom or answer to customers. Most of the technologies that you've seen before are great at either storing data or retrieving data, but traditional KM Technologies have often been difficult to locate, laborious to maintain, and not often very contextual um, to the process of what the user is going through. And I'm just quoting some of Forrester's statistics because Forrester's come a long way um, in measuring a lot of the technologies in, in, in the knowledge space. 
Also, uh, KM Technologies, how they, how they evolved over time, I kind of put them into different classifications. Kind of the first generation I call informational-based KM, all about document, document capture, organization, search and retrieval. Time frame of these technologies occurred mid-80s to early 90s. Uh, capabilities around document structure, organization, search and retrieval. The reputations, unfortunately, the technology, real high implementation efforts, case-based reasoning and those type of technologies, pretty laborious to maintain. Um, search accuracy, if anybody's leveraged SharePoint over the years, low search accuracy. Pretty much a manual organization of taxonomies and, and linkages to knowledge, knowledge articles. And overall, poor user adoption or, or no contextual intelligence. As we kind of move up the context food chain and, and understanding food chain, a second generation came out uh, right around 2008 to 2000, 2008. It was called, called second generation contextual. KM, it's about the time the uh, email vendors and the chat vendors and what we consider multi-channel vendors came out around organizing uh, knowledge for channels, optimizing it for email, optimizing it for chat. Um, capabilities include natural language queries, so search got a little bit better around natural language. Some form integration, some decision tree stuff. So try to take kind of another, another data approach to organizing KM and the reputation and then high implementation effort laborious to maintain once again. These are still on-premise based solutions. Uh, although search accuracy improved, there was still a lot of manual organization to make sure that those improvements existed. Still difficult to integrate to existing systems, being one on-premise system to another. And it basically created a lot of information silos. And I think along that frustration then emerged what I consider social KM. You know, at some point, if it, you know, we have to have some information. I think a lot of us as users of KM software have used the discussion forum every now and then or probably more frequently than we use knowledge bases just because the information is more readily available. I think what we've really learned in the social age was how to make knowledge compelling to share with each other. So there's some great things that we've learned in the early 2000s around discussion forums, crowdsourcing, or even federated search. But again, from a reputation standpoint, lower implementation effort, but very laborious to administer. Now, because I have so many conversations occurring, that I now have to kind of duplicate what's happening from the standpoint. I think a lot of us, if, we, if you search a discussion forum to find a potential problem, you find many forums or many discussions that exist in the same topic. So just kind of merging those together become a very administ administrative nightmare. But on top of that, you know, you questionable accuracy. Do you really think the information that you're being given by the forum on my iPhone is going to be the way I want to do it before I hit the reset button. Um, you know, time consuming from a user perspective. And then I guess at some point, you know, do you want to leverage federated search to embrace the chaos? It's just going to be there and I'll, I'll let search. To me, that's very a research process. So what we're doing is embarking on what we consider the next generation. Uh, and in 2014, 2015, Forrester states that uh, organizations will start to explore cognitive engagement solutions for interactive computing systems that will artif use artificial intelligence to collect information and automatically build models. So we, we, we really subscribe to this level that we consider next generation cognitive KM. And I kind of want to introduce to you our new brand called Prescience. Uh, at Prescience is our cognitive technology platform for next generation knowledge solutions. Inside of Prescience, we built out some pretty fundamental core key things that we want to show you today. It has allowed us to create knowledge solutions that really truly understands what people search for. It anticipates what they will need next, and it will improve with continued use over time. And I could sit here and talk to you about the bullet points of prescience, but I thought what better way to show it to you than have Neil kind of demonstrate some of our prescience technology firsthand. It'll be a click-through demo, so it's not a live interactive demo, so you shouldn't see any pauses. But I want you to kind of get a, a look at how we've made knowledge so easy, the answer practically finds you. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Neil Maciter. Thanks, Chris, and good morning, good evening, and welcome to um, everyone out there. Um, what I want to do is take you through some scenarios that really highlight how um, transversal prescience um, delivers on the capabilities around understands, anticipates, and improves. And we'll first start with anticipate, uh, understands. And the scenario here is that I've recently purchased a Google Chromecast. And for those that you, of you that aren't familiar with Chromecast, it's a device provided by, by Google that's similar to the Apple TV that allows you to stream live content to your TV. So for example, services like Netflix can be automatically streamed to your TV from your mobile device or from your laptop. 
And the other um, technology I'll just mention briefly is B the BBC's iPlayer service, which is a streaming catch-up service. Now, I've just purchased a, a Chromecast, but I'm interested to understand whether I can actually utilize that with uh, BBC iPlayer. So, as in common with most users, I'm not going to go and jump to the BBC site. I'm going to jump to my favorite, my favorite search engine and begin, to begin my search request. So, can I watch iPlayer on, on Chromecast? So, I type in my request and, and click search, and up comes the results page. And what we can see is the top two um, results in the, served up from Google are actually from, if you can see that, the iPlayer help page itself. And the first hit is BBC iPlayer on Chromecast, which is clearly relevant to my request. So I'll access that link, and immediately I'm taken directly into the help pages for the BBC iPlayer. And what we'll notice as I, as I scroll through, I can begin to read the knowledge article, and yes, I can use um, BBC iPlayer with, with Chromecast. And what we'll notice is that we're not just providing um, you know, basic textual information. We can also serve rich media in the form of images, in this case, how I can access on, on my mobile device, or a video in the case of um, on my laptop or desktop. So yes, this, this looks very encouraging. I ca I, so before I um, embark on um, trying this out, I just want to check whether my Chromecast device is actually compatible. And what we'll notice here at, at the bo bottom of the page in the related list of FAQs, the transversal prescient solution has automatically served up related FAQs. And this is with no, with no effort on behalf of the administrators. This is dynamically served up. So I can quickly click on that link, and I can notice, yep, I can confirm that my, my device, which was manufactured in 2013, is indeed compatible. But while, I, while I'm in the um, BBC iPlayer help, help site, I've got another query concerning iPlayer is that I'm, I'm due to be going on to a business trip to the US. So I want to find out whether I can actually utilize iPlayer while I'm out in the, out in the US. So I jump to the search box and begin to type my query. And what you'll notice is as I'm typing, um, Prescience is, is serving up questions related to what I've typed already. Um, as I continue my request and request can, complete the request with access in America, we'll notice the, four, the fourth hi highlighted link, which is clearly very, very, very relevant to me, which is, can I, can I use iPlayer abroad? And what you'll notice there is that, uh, although I've typed in access in America, it's actually serving a, a, a link up related that's um, determined that it's a query about being outside the UK, rather than being specifically in America. So I can click on, again, access that link, and again, I'm taken into, into a, a knowledge base article. You'll notice, for example, the iconography on the top allowing me to restrict my request to particular, to particular devices, but in this case, I'm going to scroll down, and this time, I'm a bit disappointed in contrast to my Chromecast scenario, because, because due to rights restrictions, I can't actually access iPlayer abroad. I uh, can't stream content, um, which is a bit disappointing, given that I'm going to have plenty of time to catch up while I'm, I'm jet lagged. Um, but as I scroll down through, the, through to the bottom and again see the related uh, FAQs, I, the third link that's served up there automatically by prescience uh, hits the button here because it's about the ability to watch downloads anywhere, even when I'm offline. So I'm intrigued, so I'll, I'll dive in a little more, and yes, I, c I can. I can actually download content and, and view it w whilst I'm outside the UK. And in fact, I can even jump to from within a link embedded into the knowledge base article directly to get access to the download service. So pro again, providing access to all the information that I need as a as a user without have, ever having to leave the help site. So really to reprise what we've seen here, the first capability that Prescience provides is what we refer to as automatic SEO. And this is the, uh, the ability that 
as, as knowledge is, is authored, it's automatically optimized for public search bots so that the content has a high ranking, as we saw with the top two articles being served up in response to my um, Chromecast request, which clearly improves the findability of, of knowledge because it's being accessed from what is you know, a very common start point for users in their customer service journey. In fact, the BBC estimate that up to 50% of their, their requests for help actually originate from Google. This, this also clearly minimizes um, customer effort, as well as having the, the additional b benefit of driving uh, traffic to, directly to the website, and is obviously key on mobile devices. The second capability we saw was the prescience predictions, where as I was as I was typing in my request, it, it was automatically serving up questions from the knowledge base that would be relevant to that request. But this is this is not the sim. The, the more simplistic approach of just analyzing user searches, which can clearly result in, in requests that return no data. Uh, what it's doing is doing a conceptual mapping of, of the um, concepts in my request, the concepts in the knowledge base, which guarantees that it, it serves up, only serves up um, questions that are going to deliver, deliver answers to the user thereby increasing the search accuracy and consistency. The other benefit is that it also helps users in terms of dealing with you know, search terms that are difficult or hard to spell and even deals with, with spelling mistakes. Once again, reducing customer self-service effort and critically on mobile devices, avoiding the need to type. The final component I, I want to talk about is what really underpins the, the conceptual understanding of our cognitive platform, which is the prescience memory engine, which, as I indicated, um, understands concepts and the relationships between terms to provide a full semantic understanding of the, the request. So we can see here, for example, that as a human being, any of you in the audience will understand that access in America watch programs on vacation and access movies on holiday are all conceptually related in the context of, in this case, accessing iPlayer outside the UK. And this is the sort of conceptual um, capabilities that the cognitive solution that Transversal provides can deliver, which is far more effective than the more traditional keyword approaches, even where synonyms and stop words are used and, and stemming to provide natural language Search because we're actually understanding the concepts, not just the language. Another key benefit of the memory engine is, is, is that it learns through experience. As new knowledge is added and maintained and updated, it's continually refining its understanding of the key concepts and relationship. The ultimate benefit being that it improves self-service out outcomes for users by virtue of getting them to the information they need, even if they don't type in the exact keywords that would return that, that answer. I now want to move on to the next area or next core tenet of the prescience solution that, that Chris mentioned, which is around anticipate. And this is re really about delivering more intelligent, engaging self-service users, the journeys for users. And in this scenario, we'll also demonstrate how this can be delivered on any device. So in this case, this, the scenario is that I'm now on my business trip to the US, and um, my daughter's got a sleepover, and my wife just called me in a panic because the TV's broken down. So I, and despite the fact that I'm in the US and it's a the time difference is significant. She still wants me to try and sort out this problem. So immediately I jump onto my mobile device and initiate Siri and ask the question, can I get next day delivery from my favorite retailer who I'm going to purchase my TV on, which in this case is Marks & Spencer. And again, using the automatic SEO capabilities of Prescience, we can see that Siri's returned a, a series of results, the first of which is um, from the Marks & Spencer's help pages that are served by Transversal, which is, can I get next day delivery? 
I access the link and immediately I'm taken into a knowledge base article which is optimized for the mobile device that I happen to be interacting on. I can scroll through the article and see that yes, I can, can get next day delivery. It tells me how much it costs and when, you know, provided that I, I or my wife order before 7 p.m., which is clearly feasible given the, given the time, time difference and the fact that, that I'm suffering from jet lag, so I'm still awake. Um, I did, what I can do at this point is, as a user, just quickly on the mobile device, just give a thumbs up to the article to, to rate it because it's absolutely answered my question. It doesn't, act, although, however, answer my next question, which is, well, I know that I'm out in the US and that my wife um, works during the day, so my, I'm not sure what, what's going to happen in the scenario where uh, neither of us are going to be in. But fortunately, um, Prescience has anticipated this, this need and served up a related question, which is when, if I'm out when you deliver. So again, with a single click, I can get access to the next knowledge, that knowledge base article. I can scroll through, and I can see that someone needs to be in to receive this when we deliver. But they'll try and deliver it, and, and they can deliver to a neighbor who can sign for it on my behalf. And we're in the fortunate position that our neighbor uh, doesn't, doesn't work, but they can, they can sign for the, the delivery. So it's looking odds on that I can actually stop my, um, my daughter ending up in floods of tears because her, her makeover, her uh, sleepover isn't going to be accompanied by some of her favorite DVDs. But before I, before I do that, I'll again rate that article because it, you know, it, it, it again has answered my question. Um, but before, before we do the deed and place the order, I just want to double check that they can deliver to my postcode. And once again, Prescience has anticipated this need and has served up a, a related link around delivery to my postcode. So I'll access that link. And at this point, I don't have to leave the site, even though um, Marks & Spencer provides its own postcode checker. That's actually embedded into the knowledge base article. So I can simply type in the postcode click on the check, and yes, it delivers to my postcode. So what we can see is that without, without, with minimal typing and just the clicking a, a few links, I've gone through a, what is quite a sophisticated user journey, determined that I can get next day delivery, what, what I can do if the, there's no one in to sign for it, and even check um, with Marks & Spencer's internal systems that they deliver to my postcode. So what we saw there was, was, first of all, we saw the Prescience Device Mark capabilities, which exploits responsive design to ensure that, that the knowledge base articles can be delivered on across a variety of devices from tablets through to a range of mobile devices, because it optimizes the, the text, the graphics, the navigation for those devices, um, which clearly delivers an enhanced customer experience. And that requires no additional administrative effort on behalf of the knowledge, knowledge administrators in terms of the way they author content. And it doesn't require any additional code um, on, web, on the website developers. Prescience automates that, the entirety of that process so you can guarantee that the, the content that users need is delivered in, on the appropriate device in the appropriate way. The next aspect I wanted to talk about talk about were the, the related articles or re, um, related FAQs that we saw both in the earlier BBC demo and also in the Marks and Spencer's demo in the form of the prescient smart, smart links, which are really about anticipating what customers are likely to ask next. And, and it does, that, does this through exploiting the conceptual mapping, conceptual understanding of the memory engine. So essentially, it, it provides a conceptual association between the article I'm currently viewing and, and other articles that are conceptually related. Um, and the key thing is that that's done completely automatically. There's no um, embedding of links by the knowledge administrators. As content is added to the knowledge base and, and um, prescience builds up its conceptual understanding, as users navigate, it serves up that that content, really mimicking the customer's train of thought through the user journey. 
the other benefit here is that as as more content is added, because the conceptual understanding and relationships are continually refined, the the smart links themselves are improve over time. And this this is a this is, provides a powerful benefits over um, alternatives that just rely on how users navigate. Because if, for example, you rely on the way that users navigate through the content, if users start randomly clicking on different knowledge base articles, it's going to make associations that really aren't realistic. And the final point is clearly that without, because we're just, uh, users are just having to click on knowledge base articles, this is critical for mobile navigation alongside the, the prescience device smart technology I just discussed. So, so finally, what I want to talk about is something that I've already c touched on um, earlier, which is around improvement. I've mentioned some of the implicit capabilities that we have through, for example, the memory engine um, improving its understanding of the concepts and relationships between those concepts as content is authored, and the automatic uh, um, improvement of um, the smart links, and also the fact that the search predictions that I mentioned earlier in, uh, are actually also improve on the basis of user requests as well as the conceptual understanding of, of the um, knowledge base articles. I want to t talk now a little more about some of the explicit capabilities we have around improvement. And the first of, of those is really around the knowledge feedback, which we saw in the Marks and Spencer's example with the thumbs up, thumbs down um, rating that I was provided to, not, to, to knowledge base articles, which is fed back to the knowledge administrators. In addition to the, the knowledge feedback on articles, Users are also, for example, in a contact center scenario, able to make suggestions for new content, as we can see on the screenshot here. And the key thing is that all of this information is fed back to the knowledge administrators so that they can provide you know, updates to the knowledge-based content based on that, that feedback. And that's all control in a controlled fashion through our knowledge admin portal that provides automated you know, workflow approval processes where required. So what we get is controlled, managed um, updates to, to knowledge to ensure it's, it's fit for purpose um, based on what, how users are interacting with that knowledge. The next element of the, the knowledge improvement is to really talk about what we refer to as knowledge insight which, as the name suggests, is really about the reporting and analytics that underpin the engine, which comprises, as we can see on this, the screenshot here, a, a daily administrator's dashboard where they can get an overview, and we can see, see some indication of that, of you know, how well the knowledge, the knowledge base is being used. You can also get insight into the accuracy of, of the knowledge base in terms of how well the, the knowledge articles are being conceptually matched to the, the user's search requests. You, administrators can drill into that into much more detail through a, a variety of detailed reports that provide information on search utilization, on feedback and suggestions. Um, and really, the, the overall benefit of it, this is that the, the, you can maintain the quality and they can maintain the quality and consistency of the of the knowledge base through a combination of the analysis of the usage and the feedback that, that users are providing. I'm just going to hand over to Chris briefly to introduce um, some new technology that we have. So I get to talk about some of the fun stuff, some of the stuff that will be out uh, later this year. Um, I'm going to talk about a new technology that we're delivering that's currently in beta with some of our customers. Uh, a lot of what we heard from uh, the knowledge administrators that we work with at some of our large companies, is there any way you can give us insight, uh, deeper insight as to what could potentially be hitting my organization next? Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of a crystal ball approach, but we said, you know, we've been leveraging stuff, social media monitoring. Is there any way you could link into that? And we're like, well, we don't really need to link into that. And, and what are you using it for? He said, well, you know, if we set up our social crawlers uh, to search for transversal breaks when, 
and I want to monitor Facebook, Twitter, and whatnot, can you give us insight before that actually comes into our contact center? And we said, you know what? Um, we can do one step better. So, you know, something like an iPhone 6 that comes out or iPhone 6S and you find it bends and it breaks, you can guarantee that tsunami of flood is not only going to hit your contacts and your emails, it's just going to happen. So what we decided to do is create a new product. We're calling this product TenWatch. And TenWatch um, has the ability to give you uh, monitoring from external social systems. So I don't want to claim we're another social media monitoring tool. Here's what we're doing. The first thing we're going to do is you pointed out what social sources. And the social sources that we're supporting out of the box uh, in our first release is Twitter, email, search results on your website, uh, and moreover, which is an aggregator of some social information. And what we're going to do by pointing um, our solution, our prescience engine at that source, on the next screen I'll show you, is we're going to automatically cluster that information. Again, like we talked about, Neil talked about earlier, we're not asking you to know what to look for or know how to categorize all this content, we're basically going to take all this content, cluster it up, and use our categorization engine to give you themes and patterns that we're then going to analyze. Once we analyze those themes and patterns, we kind of put them on a noise chart. And we allow you to set thresholds on this noise chart of if it hits to level six, I want to know what's going on. So after we've organized those and put them on a noise chart, if it reaches an abnormal activity level, we're going to send you a text. And, and this text will go to a knowledge engineer to say, hey, look, there's abnormal occurrences occurring on this theme. That's giving you unprecedented information of what's happening either on social or searches, giving you quicker insight before it gets into your contact center, allowing you to get out in front of it. And that's a new product we call TrendWatch. So I'm hoping you're getting a really good idea of what we're doing with next generation cognitive technologies. We, we truly believe you know, companies need a transformational change on how they manage technologies. Incremental improvements in search and usability in online communities are just not enough. I'm going to ask you to kind of imagine if you could figure the most perfect solution, and this is what we do. Stuff that we're doing today, imagine a self-help technology that understands what people are going to ask before they finish asking it. Imagine a knowledge everywhere technology where we no longer have to search for answers. The answers actually come to us. Imagine a contact center technology that delivers intelligence to frontline workers without a single mouse click. And imagine a technology that can forecast potential business disruptions before they surface into real problems. At Transversal, we call this technology prescience. Our cognitive technology platform for next generation KM that is changing the way businesses connect people to knowledge. We thank you for your time today, and with that, I'll turn it back to Andy for open Q&A.